Good morning, church. I uh, hope you're well. Uh, welcome to another e another day, another morning of Sunday service. Um, before we start, uh, we kind of want a bit of communications with each other. I know we can't see each other, uh, but if you have people around you, uh, like give them an air high five or like give them a, a, a nod of approval that if you're on your own, uh, you can just high five yourself, you know, with the whole awkward one. Yeah. Just a bit of bit of a wake up in the morning for a, a new service, uh, a new Sunday service. Um, yeah, so let's start with today. You're very welcome to Sunday to today's uh, service. Um, start the first slide, please. Yes. So yes. today's verse is Hebrews three thirteen fourteen. Uh, let's read together. Uh, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the end. Okay. Uh, yes, you're very welcome again. So yes, this week we have Come, Wait and Seek uh, on Friday. It starts at 7.30. Uh, it is a time of uh, prayer, uh, praise and worship and um, so we gather at, on Friday once a month uh, to be able to have fellowship together we're able to kind of um, pray with one another uh, to worship with one another um, and simply just to care for each other so please welcome yeah, you're very welcome to come to, uh, to come wait and see on Friday at 7 30 on zoom um, yes corporate worship okay corporate worship uh, Probably two types of people who, when they when they start to hear uh, this relaxing of uh, of of uh, COVID measures, is one is that they really uh, wants to go back to normal, and the other one is that they actually like uh, what they're doing now. Uh, and you know, as as for even for myself, like waking up probably half an hour, forty five minutes before service is is quite good, but it kind of. For me, it kind of feels quite uh, lazy, you know, and also reminds me the whole uh, picture of fellowship. Uh, I don't think um, that the picture of fellowship was part of behind our screens. So I think God has actually pictured it together. Uh, so thankfully, the, the government is relaxing uh, restrictions. Uh, we're actually going to phase four nearly uh, in, in, on, in three weeks time. Uh, so we're trying to uh, restart the service, restart people meeting up uh, in, in three weeks' time, uh, 19th in, in, of uh, July, uh, of course, with social uh, uh, distancing kind of rules. So uh, if the brothers and sisters were over 60 or 70 uh, and people who have uh, health problems, please refer to the HSC guidelines. Uh, other words, uh, we will try to uh, update everyone for, for people to come to restart service again. Um, next one was light in that. Uh, yes, so, so we've been asked for to prayer for the, uh, all the work that we have around this because uh, because we have to buy the equipment, we have to pray for the te the preachers, the worship team, the preparation, the AV team, uh, and, and pray for our brothers and sisters who might have a, a fear of coming uh, or might uh, have uh, you know don't want to uh, don't want to come because of, of just a fear of of uh, what the pandemic has. Uh, and it reminds me of, of yeah, the, that we, the picture of what God wants us as a church um, and, you know, the, and the importance of, of coming together physically, uh, where we're able to actually meet each other, we're able to encourage each other, we're able to pray for each other physically. I know through Zoom, it's, it's, a, it's another alternative, but it's, uh, it's not as strong as actually meeting somebody. And, you know, I remember uh, meeting my family again in around uh, two weeks ago, uh, and it's just so, so much... Um, you know, it's so different, especially when you uh, choose difference between through talking to a screen and actually meeting up face to face. Um, and and the, the importance, another importance of meeting up is like it reminds us that we're actually not alone. Uh, I know a lot of people during this time, uh, I think they feel quite lonely, uh, especially when they're stuck in behind, behind the four walls. Um, so, you know, it's a time where we're able to come together. Again, we have limited uh, um, spaces so each week might be different so actually uh, more details will come up uh, especially if we when we're organizing coming back to to corporate worship uh, another um prayer I, I want to update 
uh, is last week we talked about a, a brother, brother's nephew, um, who, um, who was sick after a recent operation. Uh, good news that uh, recently he said this, uh, that the nephew is getting better. So thank God for that. And, and let's continue to pray for him. Uh, pray that healing works and I pray that God is in full control. Uh, so let's just pray for his, nep- uh, for his brother's nephew. Uh, Father, Lord, just thank you for this time. Uh, Lord, thank you for healing. I continue to protect uh, our brother's nephew. Um, I know at times it's just uncertain and family and his friends uh, could be quite worried about him. Uh, but I pray, Lord, that it's all in your hands. I pray, Lord, that you're in full control of this. Uh, and also pray for all the people who are, are sick as well, um, whether it's sick from, uh, from uh, the, the COVID or sick from other uh, illnesses. I pray that you're able to uh, have healing upon them. Um, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, last slide is about uh, offering. Uh, so if you haven't done so, uh, or would like to uh, contribute to offering online, um, you have electronic offer. Uh, details here. Um, again, we're coming back, uh, hopefully restarting physical worship as well. So if you have uh, things that you want to offer back to God, uh, that's actually a good time to uh, at that time. When we meet together. So now we're going to, I'm going to pass on um, time of worship uh, and praise uh, to, to Sophie. Good morning. Um... Good morning. Um, yeah, just uh, welcome to Sunday service. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> I got a bit more awkward to move every day. Um, I just, yeah, I just really wanted to read the beginning of Hebrews. Um, I guess the the inspiration I got last week from Sam's sermon was to start reading Hebrews. Um, and I I just finished up um the Old Testament. Um. And I wanted to kind of, you know, I know Hebrews really explores how the New Testament and the Old Testament tie together. And um, so this morning I just opened this and just started reading and I just want to read it to you because it's really, it's really just so enjoyable to read and such a blessing. So um, it's the beginning of Hebrews. You can turn to it in your Bible if you want to, or you can just listen. Um, So it says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom whom also he created the whole world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Mm -hmm. After making purification for sins, in other words, after making a way for us to actually be clean, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you, or again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he said, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, this was God speaking to his own son, you, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the works of your hand. They will perish, but you remain. They will wear out like a garment, like a robe, you will roll them up, like a garment, they will be changed. But you are the same and your years will have no end. Um, I just like, like how powerful is and how beautiful is God's word and what a what a love God has for his own son um, and this morning we're gonna we're gonna go through a few songs and I don't know about you but I definitely struggle a little bit to kind of sing via zoom um but yeah this morning I just want to sing a few songs and 
sing along if you want, don't if that's not your thing, and um, if you want to just read back over that scripture, do. Um, but the songs we're going to sing, we're going to start with Ever Almighty, um, just because I, I feel that the lyrics of the song really summarize that. It's here we stand on this foundation, hope is an anchor, faith is our flag, the cross is our courage, your word is our way, and it's, it's really just um, a song about acknowledging that God and all that he has created is the foundation for our very being and the reason for our very existence. Um, and then we're going to sing before the throne of God above. Um, and it's just about how Jesus, as Sam was talking last week, is our high priest um, and how what he has done has meant that we can go and stand before Christ and stand before our Father in heaven. Um, so if, if you were struggling last week to understand what Sam meant, basically just read the lyrics of this song and I think that will really help. Um, and then we're going to sing a, a song my mum used to sing me when I was a little kid. Um, and Shane and Shane have very helpfully redone it. Um, it's called What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And it's just really, um, I'd really encourage you if you don't know it, um, to read the lyrics. They're really simple. It's written not as this big complex song, but really just to take everything uh, to prayer or everything in prayer to Jesus. Um, and I think the lyrics for me, uh, we've been singing it a little bit to our to our unborn baby because we would really like this to be something that they know all the days of their life that they can, you know, not to worry, um, but to take everything uh, to Jesus in prayer. Um, so yeah, let's just let's just sing this morning. Now 
Father God, we just acknowledge what an incredible God you are. Father, how, how it all fits so perfectly together. Every plan you have, every from the moment you knit us together in our mother's womb to the, to the very day of glory when we get to see your face. You are not a God of accident, but a God of great intention and purpose. And Lord, we acknowledge you as the author of our salvation, as the author of creation. And Father, this morning we just say that we love you, that we give to you from the, the most humble and meager uh, part of who we are. God, we know that we have so little to offer and yet, you take such delight in us. God, we thank you this morning for that.
concern that is on our hearts this morning, Lord, that we would just gain the wonderful perspective that we are small human beings who has captured the attention of the living God, that you've stepped down into our lives, and what a privilege that is, and God, that we would know how glorious you are, how much higher your thoughts, how much... Um, how much greater your ways, Lord, when we're lost and confused, that we would acknowledge that we don't need to know the answers to everything. All we need to do is to come to you and to lay them at your feet. 
And God, we come to you and we lay this at your feet and we lay the words that Sam has to say this morning at your feet and ask that you would empower him from on high, that your breath, Lord, would be in every word, that you'd bring it to life and say what you want to say to us this morning. We pray these things by the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, really lovely to be with you today. Um, can I just encourage you, as I've been doing like last week and then the week before, a couple of weeks ago, just to, um, to say good morning and hello to each other and um, maybe to encourage one another. So can I just encourage you as always, um, whether you be on Facebook, you're in Zoom, um, you're watching on your phone, um, to send a message to someone, to say good morning, um, to say, uh, I would encourage you to say this morning that God loves you and I encourage you to send it to a person so that they would know, at least this morning, two things. That one, uh, that God loves them and two, that you're compelled by that love that God has for them, so convinced by it that you want them to know it and feel it. So I just encourage you wherever you are um, to take a moment to, uh, to say hi. Um, do say hi in the in the Zoom room where I am, um, but say hi on Facebook as well. Uh, just good morning to each other, and we're we're getting really close to. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, Sophie just said hello to our baby, and it's distracted me, but it's lovely. But we're getting, we're drawing much closer to that point where we're going to um, get to gather together uh, in small groups first, but in bigger and bigger groups, and. Um, yeah, it's going to be lovely. So I hope you said, said taking some time to say hello to each other and, um, and just welcome each other. Um, um, this morning, even before the service started, um, you know, been asking God and praying in desperation, God, for words to, to speak today and what it is he wants to say. And he, he kind of put the thought in my mind and I kind of saw it throughout this morning that um, the service this morning, this whole, this, uh, this whole Sunday morning thing that we do, um, everything, every part of it from that time of reflection at the beginning um, to Kev uh, opening and uh, we call it sharing the service, but what he's really doing, he's calling us into um, an attitude and a place of worship where our hearts are worshiping God. And even the announcements, um, we we're so used to like announcements in kind of a, just a typical sense where they're just about informing you, but they're not. Um, I thought even as Kev was sharing about that we're gathered, we're going to be gathering together soon. How uh, Kev led us in prayer for um our 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 brother our dear brother's nephew uh, in both celebratory praise and just continual prayer. Um, how he's reminded us about offering and giving, and then all the lyrics of the songs that that Sophie has led us through. All of these are they, they're speaking of what God's doing. Um, God is a, is a faithful God. God is a God who draws us together. God is, um, God heals. Um, just uh, in the chorus of this, that last song that Sophie sang, um, Precious Jesus, Lord, Friend, we give everything to you, Shelter, Shepherd, Savior, King. And I really felt that actually as we sang that chorus, that, um, that part that, that was really for one or two of you out there. Um, for you to know that Jesus is Lord, that he is friend, that he is shelter, that he is shepherd, and that he is saviour king. All these things. And so at any point throughout the morning um, that you um, you hear God speaking to you um, through the words that are being shared, I encourage you just to pray, uh, to speak to your father. Um, it's more important that you listen to him than you listen to me or to anyone else this morning. So that's really it. Um, I'm going to start this morning with, oh, I just need to give me two seconds where I, so I can set this up because i just got to do the thing with the stuff. Um, okay. Sorry about this. I just realized, yeah, I'm not actually sharing my screen, so sorry. <laughs> Start by sharing the scripture. So, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Three times 
If you read the letter of Hebrews three times, the author uses these words urging people to respond to God. If you're not yet following Jesus, embracing him as your savior, um, you still have the most important decision in your life to make. That's how I want to start this morning. For you, these words mean what they are saying to you today is do not wait to make a decision. Make it while you can because you do not know when your heart, which today is here listening, is willing to to listen to God, is willing to just come and hear what he has to say. Today that's true, but tomorrow it may not. This is saying, make, don't wait to make that decision. Make it while you can. Do not harden your heart. If you've already made that decision and you realize as well that every day you need to make that decision to hear his voice, um, and as like this was these were the word this these this that would be the case for many people reading hearing these words being written to them um that if you've already made this decision to enjoy the love and the fathering of God for you these words mean listen to his voice today seek it out study his words obey him today 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 and do not put it off until tomorrow do not harden your hearts Um, so yeah, um, this letter to the Hebrews actually, I'm gonna, that's kind of the, yeah, the, 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 the kind of last week we started on this sermon and, um, yeah, we call it until you race one, this kind of continuation, but I'm just going to stop this sharing for a second and yeah. Um, the letter to the Hebrews in, in my eyes is a sermon to a church and um, with one purpose in mind to give courage to its recipients, to the hearers who would have heard it being read out in the first century, to persevere in their new way of life. Um, and their new way of life as believers, people who would say, would accept Jesus as their Messiah, um, who would say, yes, we are going to live this new way that he taught his disciples, that the apostles would then go on to teach everyone else, to persevere. It's a letter that encourages us to persevere, to press on, to hold fast, to stand firm, to finish your race, to make sure that at the end of your days that you receive the prize for the faith that you are putting in Jesus. To live forever, this is the prize, to live forever in the presence of God in the world that he intends, as he intends it to be, with Jesus as your king. Um, this was the point of last week's sermon, that when God's people are drifting from Jesus, when they're being tempted to look for other ways of getting to him or resorting to an old way of life, um, that they need to persevere. Um, I think I had it, I, don't, oh, I should probably get my Bible, but it was in Hebrews chapter 2 that uh, if you have your Bible there, you can flick to it, chapter 2 verse 1. Um, it says, let me just flick to it really quickly. It says, we must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. And I made the point last week that the danger to the, the, the group of people that this letter was written to was not the persecution that they faced, that, although that was there. It, it wasn't uh, demonic attacks. Um, it wasn't... Um, I don't know, some other form of suffering. It was drifting away. And so the encouragement came to pay more careful attention. Um, and this whole idea that they... So and what, what was happening was, was that these people who were receiving this letter, they'd, 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 they'd learned of this new way of life. They'd learned about how Jesus had fulfilled the law and the prophets and they had started to follow him, but they were thinking of turning back to an old way of life. And this isn't foreign to us. I guess for the Jewish Christians and um, these Messianic Jews, they wanted to return. They were tempted to return their old way of, uh, their old ways. And their old ways were about old ways of being justified, being made right before God. But for us, and so this is why it's not foreign for us. We are tempted, I, well, I am tempted regularly um, to turn to anyone and anything else other than God, other than Jesus, that tells us, you're grand, you're fine. Uh, like, 
what's wrong? There's nothing wrong with you. You're, you, this, you are, you're exactly the way you're meant to be. Uh, I'm, I, I'm so tempted to turn to any, anyone or anything that tells me this. Anything that justifies me uh, and what I want to do, and often actually times just says, you don't even need God. So the encouragement that this letter was written to give to these people was that the one thing, or one th or one thing, I don't know if it's definitive as the one thing, but one thing that sets you back on a straight path towards God is to see Jesus. To know that he is your priest, that he is humanity and God coming together. He's the, he's the embodiment of God and humanity coming together. And you, we, we kind of know that, but it's all of a sudden it's really clear because he's the high priest who represents humanity before God. And yet because he is both human and God, he's able to do that perfectly and he exemplifies it. He embodies it, that he comes before God on our behalf and together with us, this is the encouragement that as our priest, that he enjoys with us an interrupted relationship with God. Um, last week I explained how we would focus on Hebrews uh, chapter 10 uh, verses 19 to 25 um, and, but as you can see we're, I'm sharing, we're sharing scripture from all over Hebrews because it really um, the whole book is the whole, that whole letter is, is a sermon and we're just picking parts out to kind of uh, I guess help us digest it. Um, we looked at verses 19 to 21 um, or more to the point we looked at where and why we can find confidence in God. So again, as I mentioned, I'm just trying to help us get a, just hit the ground running this morning that this letter is written as a letter to encourage people to persevere, to persevere in their faith. And we broke this passage of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 to 25 down. We broke it in half. And that first half was looking at where and why we can find confidence in God. And we looked at how Jesus is referred to as a great high priest over the house of God. We discovered his role. That this role of high priest is someone who represents man before God. Um, how this role is ancient. And how Jesus perfectly and definitively became our high priest. And as a result, he's able to save completely those who come through him. I'm just going to put that up, that, that, those verses, and share them. And we're just going to refresh ourselves uh, with them. Um, so oh, there it is verse 19 to 21 this is where we were last week therefore brothers and sisters since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body and since we have a great priest over the house of God so that's what we looked at. And look, look at that in verse 19. Since we have confidence to enter the most holy place. And I shared it way a couple of months ago. That the most holy place is where God. That's a description of where God is. So we have confidence to enter that place. To be there. Because of the blood of Jesus. And you can see it there for yourself. Um, this week. We're going to look at the rest of the passage, verses 22 to 25, and see how it completes this call to persevere. Um, Tim Mackey, the, one of the founders of the Bible Project, who a lot of you guys know, he describes this passage, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25, as the hinge. If you can imagine, a, he used the analogy of a big revolving door. You've all been in one of those big revolving doors that they just, they're huge and they, you just have to jump in at the right time. But how chapters 5 to 10 of Hebrews is all this, um, all of this explanation, all of this rich, rich uh, unpacking of these things in the Old Testament um, that a Jew at this time would have known prophets, angels, priests, sacrifices. How at this point in the, the, ver in, the, in, the, in the letter, the author then says, Therefore, having looked at all these things, therefore, we have confidence to be with God. And it's the, this is the hinge verse because now we're going to go from 
okay, we've established and we, we or for if you're like me, you're beginning to understand why you have confidence, such a strong confidence. And as we, as this, as the, as this, the letter pivots, it now looks at response. So we're just going to read through verses 22 to 25 and actually look what, what it says. Um, uh, yeah. So let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Um, so we want to look this morning at how verses 22 to 25 how it completes this call to persevere. Or I guess, you know, if you read the rest of the letter, it's kind of kick-starting. But we're going to, for the sake of this sermon, we're going to say it's going to complete this message of perseverance for us. Um, it's a little bit easier this week in in that this week all we need to do is to meditate over three um, let us statements. Um, uh, as you can see, the, the first one is that you can see in verse 22 begins with let us, 23, let us, 24, let us. And I know in the, some translations, verse 25 starts with a let us, but I think that um, this is nicer as a three-point sermon than a four-point sermon. So, And also this this uh, this version of the uh, of scriptures, which is the ESV, just, it, it actually connects 24 and 25 together, which it makes sense that they do. Um, but, but just before we get on to that whole let us, I just want to... I only, and I kind of noticed this just this morning as we were, as I was kind of cramming, we're not cramming, but really just asking God for the words to say today. It This section ends with the words, uh, encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I just want to, the day that the, the author is talking about, he's referring to the day of atonement now. Jump back to last week, and of course, everybody here remembers uh, the Day of Atonement because I talked about it last week, and you all pay so much attention and retain all the information that you get. Yeah, right. But just to, as a reminder, the Day of Atonement is that day, that one day of the year, where the high priest goes into the temple, well, makes, first of all, takes off his priestly garments, and he stands before God as uh, in his normal uh, priestly garments. He comes and makes a sacrifice for himself and then he enters into not only the inner temple but the holy of holies um that that most holy place that we talked about in verse 19 and then he makes a sacrifice for all the sins of the nation of israel and so like i and i also mentioned last week how the things that we see one of the amazing things that we find is that and we loads of people have how, like lots of people message me about how that whole imagery of origami helps them really capture this idea that the th the things that we see in the Old Testament come to fulfillment in Jesus, and so we can see the the, the things in the Old Testament they're like if I was to try to somebody who's never um, tasted an avocado, how would you go about? explain to them an avocado you would begin to describe the different parts of it the skin the texture um the the form of it that it's you know rough on the outside you know you describe the parts of it but then when you actually see the avocado you're like oh it all makes sense i get it and in the same way jesus makes the day of atonement he brings understanding for us and whereas in the day of atonement in and the Old Testament is a day where Israel is reconciled to God. The Day of Atonement for us, in light of who Jesus is and the revelation that we have, is that is the day when Jesus returns. When he comes to rule and reign as the king over all creation, um, over everything. And every, every uh, that's the point at which the new heavens, the, like the earth is recreated, all that stuff. So that's just a... You know, it's to keep in the back of your mind that these three things that we're going to speak of, all the more, do them all the more 
as you see the day, that day approaching. Which kind of makes you think, if I don't know when that day is coming or what it's about or what it looks like, I really don't know <laughs> uh, what it's what it, what it's going to look like if it's getting closer or not. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, I mean, it is coming. It's really soon. And the Bible tells us it's soon. Okay, so uh, we're going to start to unpack these three let us statements um, one at a time. And um, I was te I'm tempted to I was tempted to kind of give a catchy way of remembering it but I kind of really reluctant to do that because I feel like it it anyway I'm going to give it to you anyway kind of three words that will help you maybe remember what we're talking about this morning but they're really they don't do the scripture justice they don't really um capture it but they might just help us in memory so I'll give them to you and remember this is all about what we're looking at this morning is is perseverance and this is all you know, as, as verse uh, 19 starts, therefore, seeing as we have learned all of this stuff last week, now. And those three words are identity, certainty, and community. And three parts of, of perseverance that we can, that we can work with. Again, just words, let them be like just little hooks in your memory that will help you remember or, or, or expand. But really, we want to look at, we want to look at the scripture and see what they say. So the first one we're going to look at is in verse 22. Um, oh, there we go. And this is, so I, this is identity. Let us draw near to God um, with a full, with a sincere heart and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Um, Jesus coming as our, Jesus coming to earth, um, dying for our sins, being raised to life again, ascending into heaven, all, all that, it creates a new reality. Again, he is the high priest who literally creates a new life for us. Um, if our only understanding of being in a relationship with God is theoretical um, and has no real impact on our everyday lives, then all we have is an idea of a relationship. We don't have the relationship itself. Um, drawing near to God that's even that phrase drawing near to God. I was trying to find ways to break that down because sometimes it can feel for some of you it's, it's a very tangible thing, but for some of us it's very abstract. Drawing near to God is about enjoying his guidance. It is about experiencing his peace. It's about marveling at his wisdom when there's a situation where there are no options. And you pray and say, God, I really do not know what to do because there's no clear right or wrong, but something has to happen and I don't know. And then God leads you, puts a thought in your mind to go do something that, and everything works out. Being overwhelmed by his forgiveness, being really impacted by his forgiveness and being humiliated by his love. These are all real experiences. I could go through those one at a time again and I could put in place someone else that you know, like a friend or uh, a parent or a sibling uh, or a teacher uh, and they would all make perfect sense and you would all, we would all have that idea of drawing near. I'll go through that list again. Drawing near to God, enjoying his guidance. We've all enjoyed the guidance of someone but do we enjoy the guidance of God? Experiencing the peace that comes from being with him we all know it's like to be with somebody or people that we can just feel at ease in ourselves and um, marveling at his wisdom we've all heard incredible teachers who just explain things so beautifully and simply have we sat with god have we sat with jesus have we allowed the holy spirit to sit with us and speak to us um, and being overwhelmed by his forgiveness, being humiliated by his love, these, these are all real experiences. And here's the thing, the more we draw near to God, this is where what, they're saying, what the author is saying, draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance of faith brings. The more we draw near to God, the more real we discover 
the reality or the more we discover the or the more we experience the reality of what Jesus has accomplished um no that's a bad example I won't give that one <laughs> um the result of drawing near is that our faith and confidence in Jesus our faith and confidence that we can that we have been reconciled to God the result is that our faith and confidence grows and is strengthened. Now, when we look at this scripture as well, and I've left it on the screen on purpose just because it, it's what deserves our attention. God's word and him speaking to us is what you we really need to meditate over. Is that if you look at the things that he mentions there, so come draw near to God with a sincere heart. So with an, a true heart is what the ESV says. A true heart and with full assurance. That means come to God truly, honestly, sincerely with assurance that faith brings. And here's what's really lovely. Having, X, Y, Z, having had our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near to God with sincere hearts. Hearts that honestly have faith in God because things have happened real things have happened Jesus Christ did die even people who don't believe in God or who aren't Christians will find it really hard to deny that Jesus died uh, and that he rose again even that is a hard thing for people to deny because there's so much evidence for it and then for so many of us who are Christians who are uh, who who have been become Christians having our bodies washed with pure water. These things, whilst so often we describe them as being ceremonial or um, representative of something, they are concrete things that happen. And this whole, that whole experience for so many of you, which is being baptized and washed in water and having said, I'm gonna die to my old life and raise out of the water, just like Christ raised from the tomb and come alive with become a new creation in him that is a real event and so the scripture is saying let's draw near to god because we know we have a faith and an assurance that jesus died for us and that we have been cleansed from guilty conscience because every time uh, I feel guilty, I get to go to Jesus and say and know already in that moment that as I ask him for forgiveness, he's paid the price for it. Um, the scriptures, not just Hebrews, are full of these calls to draw near to God. God walked with humanity in the very beginning and walking with them is what he sets out to reestablish in coming down to earth. Um, I was reminded as I was meditating and reflecting on this passage of scripture how uh, a brother of ours many of you know him um was has just been really impacted by how has just seen how uh, jesus is really his lord and savior and was sharing about how um god is so holy how can we go to him and we've had lots of conversations since then but i i actually i just share with you a, a passage in exodus 19 because i told that brother that um because of jesus um we can come before him because um, jesus gives us his righteousness uh, and you know i was sharing with this brother all these different things but um this morning as i was looking for uh, i was just exploring this whole idea of drawing near and i was saying god where else do you say it in your word um that we can draw near and one of them is uh, in Exodus 19, I thought this was really incredible. Uh, bear with me, stick with me. This is going to, we're going to go on a, I'm going to knit some things together for us. It's that in Exodus 19, uh, chapter, verses, ch Exodus chapter 19, verses 20, 20 to 24, this is where God is meeting his people who've come out of Egypt and um, they're at Mount Sinai. And this incredible things happen, this incredible things happen, this, an incredible thing happens. Moses is called to go up to meet with God. Um, and again, we're talking about persevering by drawing near. And in Exodus 19, you'll read that only the priests were allowed to come near to God. Now, this is incredible. So, because because this is still true. Actually, only priests can draw near to God. Even today, even with Jesus, I believe that only priests can draw near to God. So if he's looking at me going, mm, sounds kind of weird. Um, oh, she's not looking at me because of that. But no. 
that only priests can come near to God. But we read in, so we see last week, we saw how Jesus is our high priest. He's a new, created a new order. But here's the thing, we talk about that those who become Christians, those who follow Jesus, who become disciples of Jesus, they are following after his priesthood. This is incredible. Like our, our motto verse for this year is in First Peter and it says, for you are a, a priesthood. You're like we, that the, 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 those who have salvation in Jesus are priests. So yes, 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 we can draw near to God. Because not only has Jesus made a way, but Jesus has allowed us, has called us to become priests under him and to, uh, and to draw near to God. I have a whole bunch of other scripture. I'm just going to read them out because um, I just want to emphasize how throughout, all, throughout the scriptures, both Old and New Testament, God has been calling people to draw near to him. Because it is... It is your, that is us experiencing the reality of what Jesus has done. And when you experience the reality, your confidence grows. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Um, Isaiah 55, 6 to 7, seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. That was Isaiah talking about Jesus and what would happen. Um, I got one more verse or two more verses. Psalm 100 verses 2 to 4. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and we are not ourselves. Psalm 100 verse 2 to 4, amazing. Psalm 145 verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call upon him. Sometimes we ask, how do I draw near to God? Psalm 145 verse 18, he is near to you when you call upon him. When you call upon him for encouragement, for guidance, for peace, for wisdom, he is near. And when you experience that nearness, what happens to your faith and confidence in Christ and what he's done, it cannot help but be strengthened. Okay, so that's the first one. That's the first let us. The next one, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Um, let's just point out straight away that this verse begins with, let us hold unswervingly. Um, I do not believe that many of us hold onto faith we expect faith to be handed to us we expect our certainty and our trust in god to be just handed to us on a sunday morning to be said here you go trust in god um, here you go here's your dose of faith for the morning but this is not what god is saying to us he's saying hold on to hold on unswervingly to the hope that you profess now when Someone first believes, all of us, I don't know, unless you're, unless you're recently a Christian, or maybe some of you do remember, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm presuming, but when we first believe, I don't think that God gives you a total, I don't know of anyone who, to whom God has given, that their point at which they believed was when God unveiled everything, answered all the questions, all the doubts. I know some people who have yet to make a decision are waiting. They're holding God to that side of it. They're saying, you need to tell me everything and prove to me absolutely everything before I will even consider putting trust in you. But that's never going to work because God is so big. His thoughts are high, greater than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. We can't, he, it took him, he spent 2000 years explaining things like um, how we could draw near to, to him. <laughs> He took 2,000 years, or I don't know how many, actually, I don't know how many years the Old Testament spans, but that's how long it took to even begin to explain it because of the nuance and the, and the intricacy and how beautiful it all was, or it all is. So God gives us enough hope, enough to, he gives us enough to know so that we can hope and believe, but this is the incredible thing, he does not stop there. Verse 23 is saying, hold on unswervingly to the hope you profess. When you're young and you first become a Christian, your hope is exactly what you need to begin putting your trust and your faith 
in God, to putting your hope and your faith in Jesus, and to trusting Him. But there is so much more. And the verse finishes, For he who promised, who's that? God. He is faithful. Where do you learn that he's faithful? You learn it in his word. You learn it in the entire sweep of history that God is faithful. Um, those of you, probably the, the verses that most people are familiar with are Hebrews chapter 11, where it talks about uh, the heroes of faith. And it names loads of people. It names Abraham. It names uh, Abel. It names Enoch. It names Noah. It names uh, my, my father-in-law pointed out to me, he says, it names a whole load of people who weren't very good people, um, but they at some point they had faith. And, you know, you got like Samson, you got uh, Jephthah, you got loads of these people who uh, whose stories, Rahab, sorry, all these stories, like Hebrews 11, all these stories of people who didn't always see the result of their trust they put in God, but we see it. So when you read the Old Testament, when you read the New Testament even, you see how God is faithful. So what is this verse really saying? This saying is, hold on, unswervingly, without getting distracted, hold on to the hope that you profess. Hold on to the hope that you profess as you see God's faithfulness. Don't, don't like some people talk about, oh, blind faith is, it just doesn't make sense. Like I'm like people, I, I've heard people say that um, the Christians just have blind faith. There is, God requires, well, it's not that he doesn't require, he requires faith, but he, his, the faith he calls us to is based on this, I don't know, from beginning of time to today, track record of being faithful. So, Again, let me simplify that down. The first thing is identity. Oh, sorry, this one was the, the, the line that says certainty, that we would grow in our certainty and we would continue to hold on to that by seeing how God has been faithful through all time in his word. Was it? Let me break that down even more. Read his word. And don't just read on it. Read it. Like, like you're just flicking through it. But sit there until, ask God, God, I don't get this. Show me how this is, how this makes any sense, why I need to be reading this. And sit there and ask him to show you. And as you do, you'll see his faithfulness. Um, don't just take a scripture on its own, like a verse on its own, and then question the entirety who God is, but read the Bible and spend time in it. Get together with friends and do that. We'll move on to the next one. Um... A couple of things that, uh, a couple of other pieces of scripture I want to bring attention to is, one is in um, Matthew, uh, I think this is Matthew chapter 5 or 17. Jesus says, do you not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets? I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus is saying, I have, I have come to fulfill all these things. So go back, read the law, read the prophets and see how I fulfill them. In John nineteen twenty eight. This is uh, Jesus fulfilling, I think it's a passage in Psalms. This is when Jesus is on the cross. He says, late, and, and, so John 19 verse 28, Later knowing that everything had been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled. What scripture? It's everything that had come before Jesus, he said. So that everything would be fulfilled. Jesus said three words in order to fulfill these things. That he was thirsty. I mean, do you not want to go and find out where it says that? And just sit for a moment. And for those who would have heard the psalm. And just sit with them. And pretend that you're them. And be like. What? Why? Why does any of this make sense? This is referring to that. Anyway. You, you, you can look into it yourself. Go, go look at that up. John 19 verse 28. And see what scripture Jesus was fulfilling. And then be encouraged that he fulfills. He is a fulfillment of the law and the prophets. So. Now, these three things, identity, certainty, and we'll move on to the last one, which is community. They don't, they're not independent. They all intertwine because you can, you can clearly see from even this that I need to draw near to God. Jesus has made a way today for me to draw near to God so that as I go to the scriptures, I can have his spirit who will reveal these things to me. If I don't first draw near to God, 
Or if I'm not drawing near to God as I come to read the scriptures so I can find a hope to talk about, to hold on to, I'm going to get nowhere. So I draw near to God. I discover I discover how faithful he's been throughout all of history. And then the last thing, and this is, um, this is the community side of things. So verse 24. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, the day approaching, as I explained, it is not the 19th of July when we come together as a small church community. It, it's, a, it's, it's a much bigger thing. It's when, it's when Jesus returns as king, um, separates. Anyway, lots of stuff, won't get into that today. Verse 24. Um, no Christian is called to live on their own. Um, that's the first thing I say about this. The second thing I say about this is that this has really challenged me in my understanding of fellowship. It's a word that so many of us in our congregation we talk about. Um, we talk about it in it's talked about in other congregations. We talk about fellowship. That it's something that we really want. We all like know kind of what it's like. We all taste it, but somehow we just can't get enough of it, and it doesn't seem to happen when we want it to happen. This is this is really challenging to me, and I'm not saying that this defines fellowship because it doesn't, but it gives me an insight into what this gathering is to look like. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. What I see here, and what I believe God encourages us to do, is to intentionally meet which many of you do with care groups, intentionally meet with, yeah, intentionally meet with the purpose of spurring one another on towards love and good deeds. I know uh, that we do lots of that second, that previous thing, which is to discover how God has been faithful. Yes, and that is really important. And you notice again how this whole, you know, identity and, uh, certainty and community they're not they're not separate they're all intertwined that even as a community we come together and we together see how God has been faithful to us and we're, we come together and we draw near to God together as a community so it's all linked in together but this says that the purpose that the author is encouraging these people to gather together for the purpose that he's saying to gather together is that you just you look and you think consider and you you're you're really pondering you're really trying to work out how can I spur you on towards love and good deeds? You know the first thing that came to mind when I saw the word spur? It's that thing on a shoe that a cowboy would have used to kick a horse. It's, it like gets them going, but it's not always pleasant. It is a really strong encouragement. Get up, get going, and do the th things that demonstrate God's love and his goodness to the world. Um, and don't give up meeting together. Do not give up meeting together. Um, because some are, as some of us are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another. And let me just give a small clarification that, yes, this does paint a picture of what we should be doing as a church, as a church family. But no, I want to, I, it does not say that, don't, it, this is not saying only don't stop going to that building you call your church. It's the, the word church is something that we definitely need to explore in, in at another point in time. But the church, you look back, you look at the Greek, you look at the word, meanings of the words, what does it mean? At its very basic level, the church is that assembly, that gathering of people, whoever they are, whether or not they meet in a specific building, who come together because Jesus has saved them. They come together in unity under his name. And those are the people. So how do I put this into practice? Hebrews is encouraging me to whoever I know who is a Christian, do not give up meeting with them. I have friends from other churches and I believe God is calling me. Yes, to that I am primarily placed in this community amongst you guys. To love you, to spur you on to, one, uh, to good deeds, to allow you to spur me on, to give me a kick in the side to go and do these good deeds but not to do it 
uh, not never to go on my own and not just only to meet with you but to meet with other Christians and encourage them. Sophie's been telling me about how she discovered one of her colleagues is uh, as a Christian and it has just opened up this whole new world in her workplace where now they get to pray together. How incredible is that that you would get to encourage one another and the experience of that is God is at work. My confidence is built. I am strengthened. Um, many of you drew attention to how um, that little lion that I had in the corner of my presentation was like this, you know, it's a really good reminder. So I decided I'd try and throw in another one. Um, this one's not original. <laughs> um, but I wonder if, many, if any of you recognize what that, those things are. And um, we can send them into your, into the face. Oh, you're not gonna do it. It's charcoal. <laughs> I, I believe that this, this can serve us as a really good visual memory, uh, a visual aid that, um, again, we're going back to the beginning. The, these verses, Hebrews 10, 19 to 25, persevere in your faith. Because you know Jesus Christ has died for you and he is your priest who forever can, who forever intercedes for those who draw near to God through him. So important, draw near to God, not just draw near to God through some other way, but draw near to God through Jesus Christ. He forever intercedes for them. That is the basis of, the, of, of why there's any confidence that we can have in Jesus and what will help us continue on. But our response to that, our response to that fact will can help us to persevere. It is not the, it's not telling us to do, it's not telling us to, that our perseverance depends on these things. Our perseverance depends on Jesus. But our response, the natural response, will continue to encourage us towards Jesus. And What's this picture of a charcoal fire got to do with any of it? I imagine that you see this, this lump, these lumps of coal, they are what they are. They have this potential, you know, but until they are lit, until they have uh, been set on fire, they're not really doing what they're meant to be doing. They're just dead. You've heard the term live coals. But as soon as you light a coal and you let it burn, and actually you, charcoal is fascinating because it's not like tin, like wood. It doesn't just go on fire straight away. You have to keep it hot. And so often you don't see it uh, lit until it's been heating for a long time. Draw near to God. Allow him to light you on fire. Um, stay there. So that whole certainty, stay there in the fire, stay there with God so that you can be lit. And then there's this whole other picture. You, if, you, if, you ever, if anyone has ever done a barbecue or lit a fire, you know that if you take out one of the, like the fire itself is so much hotter than everything else. It's way hotter. If you take out one log, the log, as soon as you take it out of the fire, will start to cool down. And that's this wonderful picture of community. That I guess the picture is this. We are called to be together. We are called to find our identity in Christ. We're called to, God says that we can, we will persevere when we stay in that place and that when we stay in this community, continue. What does one, you know, we get the, this one piece of charcoal and it's, it's hot, but you put the whole lot together and they burn hotter. They can do so much more. They, they, now you re, we also realize that the charcoal is not meant to be on its own. It's meant to be part of this fire, this furnace. And there's the warning as well, that if you were to take one piece of charcoal out, the rest of the fire would burn bright. But that piece that falls out, it might glow for a while, but unless it's put back into that fire, into that community, it'll never burn as it's meant to. So it's just a small, I guess, illustration to encourage us. Again, God's calling us to persevere. Um, uh, I'm going to just end it here actually. Normally we have um we have a uh we have a, a song to to end with. Um but yeah, we'll just end it with that. 
Um, yeah, and I encourage I encourage you to dwell. I, I guess we I encourage you to dwell on these things. So many of us will drift if we do not draw near to God, because we will never experience the reality of what Jesus has done for us. We'll hear about it, we'll know about it, but unless we start to draw near to God, we won't experience it. Many of us will drift because we have not allowed God to deepen our faith, because we have not obeyed him to go and listen to his word, to read his word. He says, the deeper your understanding of the scriptures and how Jesus fulfills it, the deeper your faith will be. It's so simple. And many of us may drift because we remove ourselves from community. So, I'm just going to end it there. Um, I'm going to invite Kev to pray for us and to, um, yeah, just to pray for us and to, to bless us. Yeah, let's pray. Um, thank you, for Sam, for, for um, giving us the message. Um, lots of things to think about, lots of things, especially the whole uh, being coal uh, analogy is really good, uh, where we're just, you know, I can just imagine ourselves, just, you know, burning for God, not burning in the other way, but it's just that, you know, what we're meant to be, you know, setting our hearts on fire. Um, and being who we're supposed to be, um, which is great. Um, so let's pray. Uh, I just want to pray for uh, what Sam has, has uh, preached about today. Uh, we're talking about identity. Uh, we're talking about certainty. Uh, and then we're talking about community as well. So uh, let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for this time. Thank you for this um, amazing relationship that you have father that you're called us to draw near to you lord um it's so wonderful that that we're able to have this you know that we're able to actually come to you father um that when you see us you see the seal of christ uh, in our hearts uh, and then you welcome us uh, because of our, our great high priest jesus christ thank you father for our high priest uh, that we don't need any more sacrificial things we don't need any burn any incense we don't need anything but we just come as we are and father lord that you called us to to be in a community father um that we're able to spur each other on lord um at times it may hurt you know but it's to be able to, to have a genuine fellowship with each other lord and, and what sam mentioned earlier is to to have the understanding of what a church is and not not a church building but to gather of, of, of people who, who believe in you, Father, who truly believes in you and, and want to help each other, want to spur each other on. Uh, I think that's really important, Father, especially uh, in these moments of times where, we're, we, where the world wants a piece of us, Lord, um, and it's, it's not and, and, and won't stop without trying to disrupt uh, you know, how our fellowship and our relationship with you, Lord. Um, so I pray, Father, that you're able to keep us strong. I pray, Lord, that you're able to really um, help us to, to show us more about what, what real fellowship is about and what real um, uh, helping each other and spurring each other on is about, Lord. Uh, and thank you, Father, for today. We're able to, to, uh, to know um, about, the, 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 about how much that you are you know, how great that you are. Everything leads to you, Father. You know, we talked about being an old priest, uh, uh, the high priest in, in, in the Old Testament to today. It, it all, it all uh, shows a bigger picture of, of you, Father. Um, so just thank you for that. Um, thank you for, for giving us this day uh, in Jesus' name. Um, right, amen. So before we end, we're going to stop with a, or start, finish with a um, blessing. And so if everyone can just um, raise your, your hands uh, and receive God's blessing, um, may the grace of God, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today, tomorrow, and forever, ever. Amen. Um, that's the end of today's Sunday service, guys. Um, we have our uh, usual Zoom uh, fellowship. Um, if people are on Facebook and want to come in, it's 320-320-3210. Uh, for now, we're just going to grab a cup of coffee and uh, we can meet up uh, in around five, ten minutes later. So thank you very much for this time. Uh, in Jesus' name.